There is God. Well, it is now officially Sunday. Nissan 2, 57-76, the year of Jubilee. Or, if you just want to keep tabs, April 10th, 2016. Okay? This is the second day of Nissan. Nissan, excuse me, yeah. second day of Nissan. Um, which corresponds to the second month of the biblical calendar called Iyar. And because this is the month of miracles, we can actually visit the month of Iyar. ER1, Rosh Kadesh ER, tonight on right. Nissan 2. Yeah. We can visit it in the spirit realm on a quantum level. But before we do that, it is still a battle. And we must obey the command of the Torah, of the Torah, to blow the holy shofar so that we ensure ourselves of the victory. Okay. Um, Yay. Now we got Leslie. Okay. Um, you want? I'm, I'm going to try high pitch again, but I want to do a combination of the shofar, the ram's horn, and the Yemenite so far. Which one do you want to blow? I like those. Huh? Those are harder for me. But that... Okay, grab the the high pitch one on the end there, and I'll blow the uh, the high pitch ram horn gold. I did introduce myself, or Sister Leslie and myself. I don't want to put the echo on your ears. Um, I am Shilika, the Shilika, the Apostle. That's Shilika is Hebrew for Apostle and Missouri. Uh, Shilika, Rabbi Vincent P. Abs. I am a Levite. I am a Jew by birth, a Kohen, and I'm co-founder of Ez Hayim. With my lovely wife, Navia Lesbia. Navia means prophetess. And I, we haven't had the, the uh, DNA test done on her yet, but I believe in God. I, I kind of think she hails from the same country that I do, you know, somewhere there in East Africa. Uh, I think her DNA will uh, prove to be very similar to mine of, you know, Ethiopian origins, or, you know, Egyptian, in that, in that region. So, without further ado, you know, after I've made those uh, announcements and declarations, if you've been following us, you know that this is, of course, the second day of Nisan, and that the First 12 days of Nisan correspond to the 12 biblical months. And we get a jump on by doing something special that pertains to that particular month, even though it's Nisan. We plant the seed so that when those months actually do come about, our harvest will already be there waiting on us. We've already beat the enemy there. Hallelujah. Okay, and so this uh, is Nissan 2, but it's also ER1, Rosh Kadesh ER. So as we blow the holy shofar, we are doing the battle in ER and Rosh Kadesh ER, 5776, as well as Nissan 2, 5776, in the present. We're a multi-dimensional being. We're co-seated with Yeshua on the right hand of Keter, of the right hand of the Father in Hakma, with Yeshua, we're here on earth, and we are uh, in other dimensions as well. Okay? Let me grab the Holy Shofar here. Okay. These produce a high pitch sound, which is more congruent uh, with the upper chakras and upper layers of, of our auric field. 
uh, you know, Keter, the, the, uh, the third eye, meaning the crown chakra, the third eye, and the throat, and maybe even the heart. These have a more of an effect. It affects all everything, but more of an effect note-wise on those chakras or power centers. Uh, the Bible calls the auras the seven spirits of God. So I always like to uh, keep that in mind, but I, I want you to understand me at the same time. And the chakras are referred to as seven horns, and horns are a symbol of power and authority. So the Bible calls the seven chakras the seven horns. It calls the seven layers of our auric field the seven spirits, okay? And the, the shofars that we're going to blow now have a more profound effect on the horns that relate to our upper torso. Okay? Rukata, Yahweh, Elohim, Malek, Horam, Asher, Kitsur, Omisphata, Vitsivana, Al Mispha, Shofa, Vishen Yeshua, Ami. Oh, that was good. It really harmonized. Piercing. Could you inhale that long? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Okay. What a team. It cleans out the area. Any demonic presence, any negativity, anything from the enemy, anything from the dark side has to flee. In Revelation chapter 1, the Bible says that Yeshua's voice is as the sound of a mighty shofar. And when we blow these shofars, the demonic forces bow down and leave. They scatter. They get out of town. We declare this to be holy ground. Hallelujah. That's our intent, to make this place and ourselves the place, holy ground, and a vessel for which the Spirit of God can reside, and our bodies to be vessels and temples to the Ruach HaKadosh. And this helps us achieve that. Hallelujah. Uh, to root. signal for the holy angels to gather and bound forces and gather. What we blew at first was a tekiah, and that just sort of kind of announces the presence. It's on its way. It's coming. The presence of God is coming. And then we blow the tekiah, and the angels go before and prepare the way. Arrest, arresting anything that is not of God. You know, the king always has his armies and soldiers going before him. Okay? Next, we're going to blow a chef ring. And that's the angels just breaking in and breaking out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Chef ring. <laughs> So that's the breaker anointing. And finally, we will blow a tekiah gadol. This is the enthronement of God's presence. This is 
the final coronation for this particular area. This is the final ceremony. This is the declaration that it is finished. This is holy ground. This is New Jerusalem. This is the throne room as described in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5. Tekiah Gado means great blast. Is it Buku on the 
Ruku, him which is, which was, and which is to come. Ruku, he that is the seven spirits of God. Ruku, faithful witness. Ruku, the first begotten of the dead. Ruku, the prince of the kings of the earth. Ruku, Alpha and Omega. Ruku, the beginning and the ending. Ruku, the Almighty. Ruku, the first and the last. Ruku, the son of man. Ruku, he that lives and was dead and was, is alive forevermore. Ruku, he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Ruku, he which has a sharp sword with two edges. Ruku, son of God. Ruku, he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Ruku, he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shuts and shut it, and no man open. Ruku, the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Ruku, he who lives forever and ever. Ruku, our Lord. Ruku, lion of the tribe of Judah. Ruku, lily of the valley. Ruku, rose of Sharon. Ruku, light of the world. Ruku, bread of life. Ruku, day star. Ruku, the root of David. Ruku, the Lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Ruku, him that sits upon the throne. Ruku, the name which no one knows. Ruku, Prince of Peace. Ruku, Mighty God. Ruku, Wonderful Counselor. Ruku, Holy One of Israel. Holy One. Ruku, Lamb of God. Ruku, Prince of Life. Ruku, Lord God Almighty. Ruku, light of the tribe of Judah. Ruku, root of David. Ruku, word of life. Ruku, author and finisher of our faith. Ruku, an advocate. Ruku, the way. Ruku, day spring. Ruku, Lord of all. Ruku, I am. The great I am. Ruku, the son of God. Ruku, shepherd and bishop of our soul. Ruku, Messiah. Ruku, the truth. Ruku, savior. Ruku, chief cornerstone. Ruku, king of kings. Ruku, righteous judge. Ruku, light of the world. Ruku, head of the church. Ruku, head of the body. Ruku, morning star. Ruku, son of righteousness. Ruku, Lord Yeshua, Christ. Ruku, chief shepherd. Ruku, resurrection and life. Ruku, horn of salvation. Ruku, governor. Ruku Alpha and Omega, Ruku the Ancient of Days, Ruku Shiloh, Ruku the True Vine. Amen. Those are the descriptive names of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Now we are, because of Him, we can say these things. We are, as believers, we are saved. Amen. Forever by grace we pray. Hallelujah. We are forgiven. Thank you, Lord. We are accepted in Him. Yes. We are beloved of God. Yes. We are servants of the Most High God. Thank you, Jesus. We are new creatures. Praise we are name. dead to sin. Thank we are you. walking in the newness of life. Yes, Lord. We are baptized in the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh. We are the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh. We are clothed with Christ. We are holy. We are blameless. We are at peace with God. We are Jews. We are born again. We are partakers of the divine nature. We are empowered by God. We are children of promise. And we are one in Him. Yes, Lord. We are the body of Christ. Amen. We are seated in heaven. Yes. We are kingdom citizens. Yes. We are a vessel of honor. Thank you, Lord. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are soldiers of Christ. We are fishers of men. We are ministers of reconciliation. Because of him, we are victorious. Victorious, Thank you. Bless your name, Father. You want to do that now? Hmm? You do that now? Right. No, you're going to do that. I'm going to bless the new one. That'll be next after I'm yeah. Amen. Boy, uh, we really have had a powerful time in the spirit today. Thank you, Lord. We have done uh, a magnificent work 
today. Um, I am Shuli Khan, your co in Sister Leslie, as your prophetess, has prophesied uh, over you today. And, and last night, it, you are being covered with the glory of God by attending this service, by listening to these prayers, by putting your faith with our faith, coming with us and putting your shoulder to the wheel and rolling back the stone and calling forth light, life and light out of darkness and death. This is just awesome. This, I, I'm excited about what's going on, about what's been happening uh, these two days, Nissan 1 and now Nissan 2. And I'm even more excited about the things to come. We're gonna do some different things in the days to come that we haven't done before. And I believe that they're gonna be magnificent. They're gonna be awesome. They're experimental. I don't know if anyone has ever done them before, but the Lord is, is dropping them on, you know, into my spirit, on my heart. I mean, we were, we faced so much resistance last night. Yeah. I was trying to put on my tefillin. I wanted to wear my tefillin last night. And I, admittedly, I, I, as I had already said, you know, I've been a little rusty studying my Kabbalah, and I haven't been uh, laying my tefillin on a regular basis. And so I was a little rusty on how to wrap it, you know. I didn't find out I was Jewish until 2010. It was not like I went to Hebrew school like my rabbinical brothers and learned how to do all this stuff, you know. The rabbinical uh, Jews, uh, they go to Hebrew school, the Hebrew school and then Hebrew camp in the summer, and they can wrap to fill them or lay to fill them in seconds. I've seen them, you know, uh, do it. They just come in, boom, boom, and they're through. I have to remember which way to wrap, or you know, I gotta think about it and everything. And I decided that I wanted to, to use a new custom. There are many different customs on how to wrap your tefillin, your arm tefillin. And I wanted to use a new custom that I prefer better, I think is more uh, meaningful and more powerful in my opinion. And I have I've done it a couple times before, but last night I couldn't figure it out for nothing. I was trying to do it for, you know, for a, a half hour or better. Couldn't get it. Got so frustrated just, just had to, you know, to give up. And Navigal Lessie said, even when you first started doing it years and years ago, you didn't have that much trouble. So the enemy really didn't want you to put on that to fill in like this night. The enemy was really working hard. I mean, it couldn't do, it couldn't stop anything else, but it it, it he went into overtime on that mm -hmm. to fill in. But that's okay. As I teach in my uh, law of attraction group, and you know, we sponsor a law of attraction meetup group here at the Energy Center, here at the temple. And in that group, I have what I call, I give a handout called the Four Gates to Paradise. And then attached to that is another handout that says the 12 Foundations of Paradise. And I believe it, it is law number 10, or somewhere toward the end, that I call the Law of Obstacles. And obstacles are not there to stop you. The Lord doesn't let obstacles get in your way to stop you or even necessarily to slow you down. They're a means to accelerate Amen. what you want to happen. Guess what? Because they increase, they should increase your desire and your passion to get it done and make you focus all that more on it. You just said the word accelerate. Gotta talk about hurdles real quick. Okay. What are you doing? Hurdles are obstacles in your ways, of course. When we hurdle, we have to accelerate to get over it. Mm, we have to okay. accelerate. You don't you don't attack the hurdle. You don't slow down, you, don't down, you gotta accelerate. Okay. I thought I had to say that. So that obstacle makes you accelerate. It also makes you more determined. You yeah. gotta be more focused. Because you can't just run flat out. You gotta 
know what you're doing. You have, like, see, you, uh, Navia Leslie was a world class athlete. Went to the Olympic trials and all that stuff. Was uh, SEC champion, NCAA champion, had uh, uh, school records and state state school and state records back in Connecticut, where she went to high school, that still stand. And she had um, school records at LSU. When we first went down there and we went into the field house, her name was up in big block letters about, you know, this big, up on, you know, near the ceiling. I mean, you, you can read her name clearly on, on the ceiling. Uh, you know, up there where the ceiling meets the wall, mm -hmm. big letters. You know, Leslie Nixon, her maiden name, um, record something so I, I forget what it said and i said my god we didn't think to take a picture of that it's down now it's been broken yeah, it's been, now yeah. was, that was over 23 years ago it was still standing and i said i can't believe we didn't think to take a picture of that i mean as many meets as we went to in that place with your name up there and we didn't take a picture of it oh man how goofy can we be but uh so she knows what she's talking about when it comes to hurdles and the law of obstacles is there to increase your desire, your passion, and your focus, thereby accelerating what you want to come. It's there as an accelerant, mm -hmm. not as a as resistance, per se. So it just made me more determined. Amen. Um, it, Amen. You know, got me mad at the devil. So yeah, he's gonna get it now. Hmm. You know, this is this is a month of warfare, and it's on. It is on. Amen. Okay. Now, this is Nissan 2. Remember the tetragrammaton per, uh, permutation? It's Yod Hey Vav Hey. The letter that created the constellation of Aries is Hey. Meditate on the letter Hey. The and you meditate on the, you know, the Tetragrammaton of the Shem Hemi Forest, Yohei Vave. The planet that governs this month or is associated with Nisan is Mars. And the letter that made Mars, that the Lord used to create Mars, is the letter Dalit. The letter that the Lord used to create the constellation of Aries is He. So by meditating on He, and meditating on Dala and meditating on Yod He Vav He, you can harness the anointing that is being released during this month. Amen. Amen. Now, so you want to remember that to meditate on those letters in that combination of the Tetragrammaton for the entire month of Nisan. But just for a second, just for a few moments, we are also going to be transported to the future, spiritually, and on a quantum level, to Iyar Rosh Kadesh, 5776. And the planet that governs that month is the planet Venus, represented by the letter He. And Taurus is the constellation represented by the letter Vav. So meditate on the Hebrew letter Vav and the Hebrew letter Pe. Pe for Venus, Vav for the constellation of Taurus, and the Tetragrammaton or Shin Hemi Forest permutation for Ea is Yod He He Vav. Yo, hey, hey, va. Let's take a few seconds. Let's meditate. Let's imagine yo, hey, hey, va in our mind. See the light coming from it, showering us with light, infiltrating us with light. Then meditate on the Hebrew letter pay and see the light from the letter pay. Covering us with light, filling us with light, 
so that that light fills us and radiates out of us at the same time. And then the Hebrew letter Vav. Seeing the light from the Hebrew letter Vav over us, around us, in us, and coming out of us from on high. Hallelujah. Okay? We only have to spend a few seconds on those, you know, for the future VR because it's a seed. It's going to grow. That meditation that we just did is going to take root, and by the time ER here gets here next month, we're going to have a full harvest from this quick meditation that we just did. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, we are also in advance going to bless the new moon of Eon. Rosh Kadesh 5776. May it be pleasing before the Elohim of the heavens to establish the house of our livelihood and to return his Shekinah within it speedily and in our days. And you shall say, Amen. May it, be, may it be pleasing before the Elohim of the heavens to have mercy over our dispersal yes. and that he will stop the epidemic and the destruction and the sword and the hunger and the exile and the scorn from us and from his nation Israel. And you shall say, Amen. We are Israel. Amen. May it be pleasing before the Elohim of the heavens to sustain for our sake all the sages of Israel, together with their wives and their children, and all their dwelling places. And you shall say, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. May it be pleasing before the Elohim of the heavens that we shall hear and be told of good tidings. The tidings of salvations and of consolation from all the four corners of the earth. And you shall say, Amen. Amen. He who performed miracles for our forefathers and who redeemed them from Egypt will redeem us and will return the sons to their borders. And with a good sign, may this Rosh Kadesh Rosh Kadesh E.R. 5776, the year of Jubilee, which will occur on May 6th on the Gregorian calendar at the universal time at 19 colon 30, universal time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Universal time is similar to military time. But universal time. It's 7.30. You said you've done five hours, so 7.30, and that's Eastern time, right? So 6.30 Central. See, I mean, we, we can kind of go nuts <laughs> with the, you know, the time. So I'm, I'm using universal time. Okay. You know, but it's the same thing, okay? Uh, that's what we got. Where did you get this from? I don't know if it was off. Last year, you got it from NASA. I don't know what page you got it off this year. I have to look at it again on email. Okay, hallelujah. So we have blessed the, the new moon. We have sold the seed there. And now we're going to sow additional seed in the new moon. Glory to God. As well as seed in present time. So we're, we're moving, we're quantum jumping, we're moving through the dimensions. Amen. Meditate on that. When we were blessing the new moon, when we were uh, doing the meditation on the letters that correspond to E, I, you know, you're quantum jumping, quantum leaping. You're going into the future. And as when Navia comes up and does this prayer, we are in multiple places at the same time. We're, we're saying them from our position in the heavenly realm as we're co-seated with Yeshua 
at the right hand of Keter and Hatma? Because what's above is more powerful than what's beneath. And there's no time or space in the heavenly realm. So we're speaking this into present time, right here in Nissan 2. We're at the same time speaking it into future time and space in ER 1, or Rosh Kadesh ER 5776, the year of Jubilee, the year, of, the year of redemption, the year when debts are canceled, all debts are canceled, when we are returned, the land is returned to its rightful owner. The last Jubilee was during the Six Days War, and we recaptured Jerusalem. After 2,000 after, oh, after two years, we're entering into warfare right now in this year of Jubilee, and we're going to recapture that which was taken from us. Hallelujah. Believe us, thou wilt. I hope. Okay? Uh, now, the God Leslie is going to come and prophesy over you. I call this the 12 principles for victory in the battlefield of your mind and manifesting your desires in the earth realm. Uh, I used to call it the seven principles. <laughs> then earlier this week, I changed it to the 10 principles. Then tonight, I changed it to the, um, the 12 principles. And so we're going forward with 12. I hope we'll, we'll see if... Uh, some more comes up. Uh, I've added uh, Psalms 119, verse 165. Uh, to the, you know, here it is. I'm putting it on the computer so Navi Leslie can read it when she gets to numbers. Okay. It's number 11. Okay. Okay, and you can you know how to pull up Proverbs four verses twenty to twenty four. But I got Psalms set up for you. The okay. you, you know, Right here, Proverbs four twenty to twenty four, and Psalm one nineteen to one sixty. Oh, I, I I should do Proverbs first. Let me put Proverbs up here for you first. Proverbs chapter 4, beginning at verse 20 and going to verse 24. And then you can pull up Psalms 119, 165, right there at the end of that, and prophesy that into Rosh Kadesh ER as well as Nisan 2. 5776. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Aren't you glad to have a prophetess in the house ministering to you yeah. under the authority of the Shilikah, the apostle, the emissary, the ambassador from on high? Hallelujah. You know, an ambassador, an emissary comes in the full power of the kingdom that he re represents. When our ambassadors go around the world, nobody touches them for fear of the wrath of the United States. And what that ambassador says is just like the president and the citizens of the United States say. When you have a shilikah, when you use the shilikah anointing or the apostolic anointing, it is just as if Yeshua HaMashiach is saying it. Just as if Abba Yahweh is saying it, backed up by the power of the Ruach HaKadosh. And then a prophetess prophesying under that authority. Same thing. As Paul says, I come to you not with excellency of man's speech, but in demonstration of the power of of the Ruach HaKadosh. And that's what we're doing. This is the Messianic Jubilee. Amen. 
This is the month of miracles. You know, send in your prayer requests for healing, whether it's in your body, whether it's in your mind and emotions, whether it's in your finances. And I'll pray for you. I'll bring the authority of heaven to your problem. It's not my power. It's not me. It's the authority of the kingdom. It's the authority of the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy Trinity. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to remind you guys of that. What's going forward here is powerful. Amen. Put your faith to the wheel here and roll back the song. Amen. Amen. And this is the New York 12 principles that Chili Collins came up with, with the power of the Holy Spirit, the New York Akadesh. Make sure you quote the scripture to them after you read it so that they can write them down. Awesome. Or you can get in touch with us if you want a copy of this. Right. You can always get a copy of this. And you can also write down the, the scriptures or follow each principle. For the victory in the battlefield of your mind and manifesting your desires in the earth realm by Shelly Ka, Vincent P. Adams. First one. For in him, Yeshua HaMashiach, we live and move and have our being. Yes. In Acts 17, 28. The second is Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us words who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Therefore we are co-seated with Christ, far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet, and he gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, that fills all in all. Next is 1 Corinthians 2.16. 1 Corinthians 2.16. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Glory. Next, the Second Corinthians ten three to five. Second Corinthians ten three to five. For we, so though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You can recite the strongholds when you say this. Strongholds of fear. Go ahead. You you, okay. you decide. Who. No, fear is always a major one. Everybody can relate to um, pride. A lot of people can relate to that's the most popular ones. Um, so, cast down all of those strongholds. And casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. The next is Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart or mind, so is he. Amen. 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 You think in your heart or mind, so are you. All the traction. Amen. Right. That's it right there. Um, next is Matthew 12, verses 34 to 35. For out of the abundance of the heart or mind, the mouth speaks. And the good man out of the good treasure of his heart or mind, brings forth good things, and out of the evil man, an evil man out of evil treasures, brings forth evil things. Amen. And next is Psalm 37, 4. So number 7. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desire of your heart or mind. If you the one to put on there, in the first place. Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord, he shall give you the love of your heart. Give him glory and praise. And he will give the light of your heart. Hallelujah. Number eight. Be careful. This is next. Number eight is Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, my favorite. Be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
Let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Yeshua. Amen. The next principle is the Philippians 4, 8, 9. Continuing on. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, Yeshua, that you do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. This is all about the mind of Christ. Amen. And but the mind that was in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, be also in you. Amen. Glory to God. That was good. Amen. And uh, next, number 10, Proverbs 16, 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. Hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Lord is much more concerned with your spirit and your heart than it is about your riches or taking a city. Amen. Proverbs 4, 20-24 20 is number 11. Proverbs 4, 20-24. My son, attend to my word, and find thy ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. But they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Keep your heart with all diligence. Amen and amen. Of life. And amen. Put amen. away from you a form of forward mouth and with perverse lips, but far away from you. Amen. These are just Wonderful basic instructions. Number uh, 12, Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 165. 165, just one verse, okay. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing. Shall offend them. Hallelujah. If you ever find yourself, like I found myself today, out of peace, disturbed, distraught, frustrated, angry, or anything like that, these are wonderful principles. All of them are wonderful to live by, to go by, to read if you are suffering from any type of emotional negativity. Whatever it is, just read these scriptures. This last one really, I love it. We added that on today. Read it again. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. His law is this all right here. I like to say love thy Torah. Yeah, I can say love the Torah, right? Torah. Torah. And great and, and that's uh, what the word is. The law is the Torah. And peace, I like to say shalom. Shalom. Amen. The great shalom, that's wholeness. Yeah. Have you which if you love his Torah, oh, yeah. nothing Great shall Lord. offend you. Nothing shall offend you. Everybody knows we have to avoid and just let go of offense. If you're going into battle, you better let go of offense. Amen. You cannot carry offense into this year at all. With God for us, who can be against us? So why are we getting upset? We're believing a lie of the devil. Now I'm preaching to myself again. We're believing a lie of the enemy. With when the Lord is for us, who can be against us? There's just no reason Amen. to be upset about nothing. It really isn't, but it's so, it can be so difficult so to do at times. It's easy to think about the negative and get upset. The flesh, the ego. Who? When we want to be spiritually strong. We want to be warriors for Christ. We have to overcome all offense. We have to embrace the Lord's words, embrace His law, embrace, embrace His Torah. Embrace it. Embrace it. Yes. You will find That's good. That's great good. shalom. You will find prophesy. great shalom. Prophesy. Prophesy. Go ahead. Amen. You will find that great shalom. There's no excuse to not try. 
There's no excuse. Try the Lord. Taste and see that he is good. And his word is great. Read all of Psalm 119. And when you apply the verse 165, after you read all of it, you, you'll just fall in love with the Lord. You just won't, you, you can't help but feel good. Amen. Amen. Lord, you're so good. Okay. Keep on. That was it. That was 12. No, but do the, the rest, the whole sheet, all four sheets. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Keep prophesying, huh? All right, so we have all of this, also the part for, um, we have one, the one principle of love, by Shinji brought the one principle of love to our attention. Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40. I'm going to see you guys have a little Bible you can look up. I'm going to have to get them, I like an electronic Bible, they can just plug it in and read. I just learned to use the Bible. Mm. Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Yeshua said unto him, You shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, of course, Amen. you need to just know the word love. So just know the word of what love is, what God says. And, and just follow through Thank you. with all of your heart Thank you and your soul and your mind. Love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. And the Trilogy of Peace by Shini Ka, Rabbi Nissan Adams. He has put together these three scriptures. 1 Peter 2, verses 20 to 23. But what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if, when you do well and suffer for it, that you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. For even here unto where you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. Read that one again. Amen. That's my favorite. Yes, but what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? There is no glory in that. But when you do well and suffer for it, then you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. This is where the glory is. It's acceptable with God. Amen. For even here unto were you called, you were called for this, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. So he's, like, he's showing us an example again, to commit ourselves to the one who judges righteously. That you can trust the Lord in all situations in the situation of conflict of someone you may have. Let the Lord be the judge. Commit yourself to the Lord. When you do that, the Lord will come through. Amen. He will show up. He will Amen. Amen. make the quickest Amen. place and straighten your life. Amen. Or in that situation, Amen. or in that relationship. Prophesy. Amen. Amen. Lord, forgive me for not trusting in you. Forgive me also, Lord. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner, Lord. Have mercy. Yes, Lord. Have mercy for me. So I give myself to the Lord for him to be the judge. He will judge righteously. He knows the conditions of our heart. And he knows what is best. Because he loves the best. We don't love the best. Our example is the Lord who loves the best. It's all about trusting the Lord and His love. So that's the glory of Him. There is glory in all of that. Now, the second in the trilogy of peace is 2 Timothy 2 23 and 26. It's but foolish and unlearned questions of boy, knowing that they do gender strikes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Again, okay, the servant of the Lord must not what? 
Strive. Strive. Argue with people. Amen. Strive with the Lord and not what? Strive. Amen. There you go. <laughs> Don't debate. Don't right. argue. But be gentle unto all men. Be gentle unto all men. Be apt to teach. Be patient. In meekness. In meekness. Not ego. <laughs> not ego. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God for adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that if they can't, you have to trust God. He is the righteous judge. Amen. He will, if God for adventure will give him, holy person, repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And they and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him and his will. Hmm. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but gentle unto all men. Have to teach, patient, and meekness, and strengthen those that oppose themselves. And that is a load right there to me. That when people are opposing themselves, we are not trying to convince them. Not our job to convince. We just preach the word. Yeah. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. Because you can't control someone else's That's good. emotions or beliefs. Say that again. Amen. That's good. Do not be upset. Do not get frustrated. Do not get angry because you can't control what other people believe or think or feel. So it's not up to us, is it? Mm -hmm. God for adventure. Lord God, God for it, adventure. Not me. Not you. Not you. He. God will give them repentance. Oh boy. Don't praise God. And we pray that the Lord do so to the acknowledging of the truth. The Lord, just let the person acknowledge, have acknowledging of the truth. Show the truth. Because God is God of truth. God is the truth. And no one knows truth more than God. We're just men who deceive ourselves. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Give them a chance because that's what is the most impactful. Allowing the Lord to show them so that they can recover themselves out of the snare of the enemy who takes people captive at will, at his will. Amen? Amen. And the last one is Colossians 1 9 to 11. The last part of the trilogy of peace. Shalom. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, mm. being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. <laughs> Unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness. Pray that one for the people to get on your nerves. Yeah. yeah. Put their name in it. When you get to the part where it says, We do not cease to pray for you, mention their name. If it's a list. There you go. Cease to pray for the person who doesn't believe in the Lord, who's posting stuff on Facebook, ridiculous things. Wants to prove that Jesus is a real. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, who just seems to talk foolishness. Just foolishness. That's right. We have to love those people. Those are the type of people who pose themselves. And you want to be strengthened with all might according to the Lord's glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness. That's that's a message right there I have to meditate on. Unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness. I like to change that long suffering, uh, you know, using neuro linguistic programming. I like to change long suffering to endurance. Yeah, long suffering is kind of a negative for endurance. Endurance is long suffering, but yeah. That's yeah, right. I mean, it, it yeah, is, because, but neuro. <laughs> Endure, that you know there's a reward at the end. That's where the joyfulness comes from. I'm like, where is joyfulness and patience and long suffering? But you can. <laughs> as, a, as a scripture said, remember that's King James Version now. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, that was a poor choice, choice of words in English, in my opinion. The same would be true if you said endurance, because you can't, I mean, yes. suffering and joyfulness are opposing each other. They're two different words. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an oxymoron. So, but if you say endurance with joyfulness, you know, people who like to jog, they, you know, some of them run three, five, 10 miles a day. They enjoy that. They're enduring, but it's with joy. They don't think they're suffering. So I don't like, I don't like that word long suffering. I prefer the word endurance with all endurance and, and, and with joy, with endurance, with joyfulness. The fruits of the spirit, when you read it in the original, that scripture in the original Aramaic, they're not nine fruits of the spirit. Those are margin notes that got into the, into the text. There are only seven. And when you read it, the English translation of the Aramaic of that, it doesn't say long suffering. It says an enduring spirit. An enduring spirit. I love that. So, it's a lot better. You know, I, my memory is in King James because, you know, that's just for how I was raised. But when I read them, you know, I change those words a little bit. Some things I make present tense instead of past or future, because neurolinguistically, it's better to say present tense. And our subconscious only understands present tense. It's the strengthening that they get glorified by. It says, Lord strengthening you to endure. And that, that is a special word when you are to, I mean, it was hard to acknowledge joyfulness in any type of suffering, so it's very good that the word is changed to endurance, enduring spirit. Very, very, very good, because I was like, okay, Lord, how do you do this with joyfulness? How do you do, how do you deal with all of this stuff with people when they, you know, act foolish? I'm talking about people who are challenging your patience. <laughs> And the Lord himself, he did say, Lord himself, he did say, how long must I suffer you people with their lack of faith? They were showing, he's like, they, they would keep asking questions. But if you read that in the original, that, that word suffering may come out. Yeah. Of, you know, he, he probably said, how long must I endure? Yeah. Instead of using suffer. Right, right, you know? right. But when, you know, when you're suffering, it means you're carrying the load, you're carrying something for them in, in your heart or in your whatever, burden, um, burdening for them. We have a burden for caring for a brother and sister who we feel is walking in error or lost in their soul or whatever. But they are in such need of wisdom and understanding, spiritual understanding. So we're praying for people who lack spiritual understanding and wisdom. And mm -hmm. we are praying that they be filled with that knowledge of God's will in their life. We pray that they, that they get hold of Psalm 119, 165. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we don't cease to pray for you. We for this cause, we also cease to pray for you. We don't cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual. Don't wisdom. stop praying. That you might be walk worthy of the Lord to all pleasing. Never and cease. Really good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthening with all might, according to His glorious power, to, unto all patience and endurance and enduring spirit. With patience, patience, patience. Uh, I read Psalm too, and uh, we. Just, it's feel like suffering, training and running that race, enduring to the very end. There is no reward. That's why I like the enduring spirit. There's always a reward for your endurance, always. Amen. You have to know endurance. Just knowing endurance is a blessing. Good for your soul. Amen. Amen. How am I doing? Nope. You got another page. Mm -hmm. That's that. I did that. We need prophecy. We need that prophecy. All right, 12 attributes of principles. 12 attributes and principles of spiritual warrior. Mm. And how's the spiritual affirmation? What month is this? ER. And also ER. what at the same time? Uh, Nissan. Oh, we're doing Nissan. We're still in Nissan. We're still focusing on Nissan when I'm saying the spiritual okay. warrior part. Okay. No, yeah. we're just both. You know, we're, we're, we're in Nissan and we're in ER at the same time. Okay. There's, no, there's no time and space. In the spirit, in the spirit realm, we're we're in both places we're at the same places. time. I I just said that because 
spiritual warrior. This Nissan is the month that you go to war. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to read down the 12 attributes and principles of a spiritual warrior. Do you want me to get the scriptures? Sure, why not? Okay. The first, praise be to Yahweh who always causes me to triumph in Christ Yeshua. 2 Corinthians 2 14. Amen. I can do all things in Christ Yeshua who strengthens me. Amen. I agree with that. Philippians 4 13. Amen. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. World. Come on, guys, wake up. I'm, I'm, I'm including you. I know you're not used to being interactive. No, you're you're about to be interactive. I want to teach you know these, okay? Okay, stand up. It won't be that long. Just go ahead and stand up. Because it means that he was in the what? Sand world? Right. Or Amen. Thank you. I shall overcome him. I'm sorry, that scripture was 1 John 4 4. I shall overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my. Testimony. Testimony. Revelation 12, 11. I am more than a conqueror to Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 37. Did you know that? More than a conqueror. conqueror. Amen. The Lord set me, the Lord has set me over the nation and anointed me to root out, pull down, destroy, bow down, and to build and to destroy the plant. To build and to plant. Jeremiah 1, 10. I am a defense city, an iron pillar, and a brazen wall to all Amen. the attacks of the enemy. Jeremiah 1 18. Stick Amen. your chest out. Amen. Amen. A defense city, an iron pillar, yes. a pillar of iron, and, and a brazen wall. Amen. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The exploits. Exploits. And they shall stand firm and take action. Say action. Daniel 11 32. Be next, proactive. Next proactive. in the book of Sirach, Sirach 2 1 is in the topical books. And it says, Prepare yourself for an ordeal. That full scripture, scripture. <laughs> that's, that full scripture says, If you have set your mind to serve God, prepare yourself for an ordeal. If you have set your mind to serve God, Prepare yourself for an ordeal. Amen. So I just take it and state it in the, fir the affirmative. I have prepared myself for an ordeal. I'm ready for the battle. I'm ready to go. Ring the bell. Let's get it on. Amen. And next, endure hardness as a good soldier. Say soldier. Soldier. Second Timothy 2 3. Next, let patience mm -hmm. have her perfect work in you. Yeah. James 1 4. Now, last in the principles, 12 attributes of a spiritual war warrior. Put not away your confidence, for it has great recompense of reward, and you have need of patience. So, after you have done the will of God, you may be blessed and receive the promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 10 35. I like to reword that one and say, um, I have not put away my faith and, 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 uh, what, what is it? Uh, faith. Confidence, hope. Uh, no, what, what, read confidence. It. Uh, what does it say? Put, put not away your confidence. Yes, I have not put away my faith and confidence, for it has great recompense oh. of reward, and I have need of faith and patience. So while I am, while I am, present tense, while I am doing the will of God, I am blessed and receive all of his promises. Remember the kingdom of God is at hand. It's a right now thing. Okay. These are promises for the earth realm. These are not promises yes. for the hereafter. This is talking about right now. Hmm. Amen. So I use the present tense in English. Right here, right now. Amen. Hebrews 1035. And the last part here is an overcomer's reward. When you're an overcomer, these are your rewards. When you overcome, you've gone through all that growth and strengthening in the Word. You have your patience, you have your faith, you do big exports, you're an iron pillar and great and well, you overcome all the attacks of the enemy. This is your reward. Amen. Amen. He that overcomes shall eat of the fruit of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And whose leaves are for the healing of the nations. 
Revelations 2, 7 or Revelations 22, 2. Amen? Amen. If you overcome, he that overcometh, the Lord will give a crown. It's a crown. Crown of life. Of a life. crown of life. Say crown of life. Crown of life. Amen. He'll give you a crown of life, and you will not be hurt by the second death. And the Lord shall keep you from all from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the earth to try you. It's already here. Yes. Revelation 2, 11. I mean, 10 and 11. Revelation 2, verses 10 and 11. And if you overcome, he that overcometh, the Lord will set before him an open door, which no man can shut. Revelation 3, 8. If you overcome. Amen? Amen. To you who overcomes, the Lord will give you power over the nations, and you shall rule them with a rod of iron. Like a powdered vessel, they shall be shattered to shivers. Revelation 2, 26-27 To him that overcomes, the Lord will give gold tried by him in the fire. Revelation 3, 18 To him that overcomes, the Lord will clothe you with white raiment, white clothing, purity. Amen. And he shall confess his name before the Father, he shall confess your name before the Father and his holy angels, and he shall be seated. You shall be seated with Christ. On the right hand of the Father, Revelation 3, 5, and 21. Amen. When you overcome, you that overcome us, will rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say, I am an overcomer. Amen. I am an overcomer. I like to read those ten in the, once again in the present tense. You know, I say, I eat of the fruit of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God, and whose leaves are for my healing, as well as the nations. Amen. Yeshua has, Yeshua has set before me an open door which no man can shut. Yeshua has given me gold tried by him in the fire. Amen. Hallelujah. I rejoice that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life forever and ever, ever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for confessing my name right now before the Father and his holy angels. Thank Glory you. to God. Amen. I like to put that present tense on it. You know, as much as much as I can. Amen. What a wonderful prophecy. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. And then we'll we'll uh, We'll end up with communion. You want to bless communion, prophesy with communion tonight, or you want me to do it? No, I can do it. Okay. And we'll end there. All right. This is the meditation that we're doing for the month of ER, right? Mm -hmm. The month of ER, for the meditation, we have the letters Mem, Sadi, Raish. Mem, Sadi, Raish. If you don't know what Sadi looks like, um, I want you to know it's like a backwards Y. Um, it's, you guys see it? Between Guvara and Tiferet. Right. I doubt if they can see it on camera. Yeah. You guys can't see it. I doubt if they can on camera. You, you know, it's Mem it Saudi Race. It's like a Y. It's Mem Saudi Race. Look, you know, Google it, look it up, you know, pull up the Hebrew alphabet and look up Mem Saudi Race. And meditate on those three letters all day today, Sunday. Amen. As well as, you know, the letters of Nissan that we've already given you. Mem Sadi Grace. The meditation word is freedom. Say freedom. 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 And these are the 72 names of God. This is one of those names. Yeah. The 72 names of God. Mem Sadi Grace. And in this freedom, as we begin to transform our lives and experience true fulfillment, we are tested again and again. Each test of our ego injects doubt. Mm. The optimism and excitement that we felt at the start of our journey vanishes. Mm. And we start to complain, and then the ego is back. I think that's very typical. Like a first thing that comes to my mind is that is, the signature very straight according to the you know characteristics of the zodiac 
influence of an area is to start stuff with excitement, but we don't finish. <laughs> we have issues with, you know, with the excitement. So, the optimism and excitement that you feel at the very beginning of a new journey, we're all excited, let's do this and everything, take advantage, and that's when you start to complain, and that's when the ego comes back. Here's the insight. As slaves and the children of slaves, the people of Israel were in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. There's no freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Then came Moshe, sent by the Creator. He won freedom for his people. Then he led them on a long and arduous journey, including that famous passage through the Red Sea. We all know about that famous passage where the Red Sea parts, right? Mm -hmm. By the hand of God, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, and they reached the Mount Sinai, where they had a date with destiny. The Lord prepared for them, to meet with them. Strangely, however, the Israelites began complaining as soon as they escaped from bondage. They even begged Moses, Moshe, let's say Moshe, to lead them back into Egypt. Why are we trying to go back to slavery? Because they wanted to eat twice, talk to me, they just want to eat. But, but, remember like one time, it was like me, you and Bill was in the office, where the murder of Bill was on fire next to the wall, like on the wall? Okay, but are you not answering the question? <laughs> Why would they want to go back to Egypt? That's what I was saying. Okay, they were complaining. Okay, how could this be possible that they would want to go back to slavery? That they, the Lord has just got them set free, led them out, and they're complaining after they crossed the Red Sea and want to go back. Was the journey through the desert worse than 400 years of slavery? Surely it wasn't. But they, they weren't thinking, right? <laughs> Kabbalah offers a startling explanation for this. The entire story is a code. It is a veiled narrative and individual spiritual transformation. It's a very big picture of individual transformation, of your own personal freedom journey. Okay? You're bondage to something. The Lord sets you free. You walk in that freedom joyfully, happy for a while. Then you forgot that you were free, you start complaining, and that ego gets back in, and then you're sent back in bondage again. You want to return back to the place that put you in bondage in the first place. So it's a very big story of transformation, spiritual, individual spiritual transformation. So let's decide for this code. Egypt refers to the human ego. Egypt is a symbol of your ego, okay? Mm -hmm. Egypt is your ego, your bondage source. Okay, so ego, in Egypt refers to the human ego, and the oldest slave master in history. So Egypt is the oldest slave master in history, okay? Any aspect of our nature that controls us is Egypt. Any aspect of our nature that controls us is our Egypt. So you have to know if you have any issues, that's your Egypt. That's what you need to get yourself free from. Egypt also denotes the seductive trappings of the material world. All right? If you notice the seductive trapping to the material world, there had to be some kind of seduction for them to even think to go back to whatever they would provide. So the moment our spiritual path becomes challenging or uncomfortable for the ego, we long to return to our own personal Egypt. Isn't that true? That's our resistance of the soul but to the spiritual things. You know, we have this, this carnal self that just wants to resist the spiritual, the truth, the, the glory of God, you know, this, why do we have this wrestling of the flesh? To return to our own personal Egypt, that is to the lower level of being that we've grown used to. The path to transformation requires self-knowledge and personal accountability. Again, the path to transformation requires self-knowledge and personal accountability. You have to have personal accountability. And it's not easy. We are constantly tempted to turn back. Escaping from spiritual bondage means liberation from the enslavement of our own former slaves. So the meditation, if you look at these letters, okay, of the men's side of the you perceive the balance and harmony that fills all creation. This is the meditation. 
you perceive the balance and harmony that fills all creation, especially in the hardships and tests that you must face through your life, especially the hardships and the challenges and the tests that you must face, you must face through your life. You have to face these challenges. And with the power of this name, you arouse strength to pass all those tests, to rise to a higher level of being, and to gain the joy and fulfillment that accompany true spiritual transformation. And you unlock the chains of ego and achieve freedom. Amen? Amen. Yes, you is our freedom. So meditate and understand the letters. Mem, Sadi, Amen. Amen. To your PMO. 72 names of God. Amen. What we're going to call this by taking Holy Communion. Let me all just now call. Okay. He doesn't know we're still on service. Amen. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. Mm. These are all very good to hear. Father, Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. Adonai, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Come down in power through the anointing of the Ruach of the Dead upon the elements of the Holy Communion Table. Fill the Holy bread with your body. Renew your presence in the whole mountains on the altar. Yes, Lord. Fill the cup of the fruit of God, the cup of blessings with your blood, and the total essence thereof. And by reason of our partaking of this holy and divine meal, let it heal every cell, tissue, organ, and bodily system in our bodies, Lord. And Father, we ask that you forgive us of all our sins as we forgive those who we feel have sinned against us. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. On that faithful night, the Lord took prayer and he break it, saying, this is my body which is broken, that yours may be whole. And after he had so done and supped, he took the cup the cup of the fruit of God. He said, This is my blood, which is shed for the remission of your sins and the establishment of the great cup of shop. Take ye and eat and drink ye all of it, for my body is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Amen. As we partake of this holy and divine meal, we believe that we are eating life into every aspect of our life. As Yeshua said in John chapter 6, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life. We believe we're eating life into our bodies, into our marriages, into the relationships between parents and siblings and offspring, and into the relationships between siblings. Life into our finances, life into our businesses, jobs, careers, life and life more abundantly. The body and blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you, Lord. Amen. May the blessings of our Lord and Savior be upon you. In Yeshua's name. Shalom. See you tomorrow night. I think I should say 8 o'clock um, because it doesn't get dark until 8 now, so we have to wait um, before we start. We do? I think so. Okay. So maybe tune in tomorrow at 8 p.m. You can check at 7 and see if we're on. We had originally posted everywhere at 7 p.m., but I forgot that it doesn't get dark at seven anymore. Okay. You know, so it's it's not Eight. really okay. the next day until I think seven forty six. So you can just say eight o'clock. Right. Amen. Amen. Shalom.